Okay, here we go. We're going to uh, wrap up our calculations, at least all the math you'll have to worry about for most of the year, by doing one more dimensional analysis problem. And then we're actually going to apply dimensional analysis to a concept called density, which, as you know, is a physical property. Think about it as density an intensive or extensive physical property. It turns out it does not depend upon how much you have, so it's intensive. So just a little review there. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look at example 16. Um, the volume of a room is 278 cubic meters. Find the volume in cubic inches. Now hint, whenever both units in a conversion factor are cubed, the conversion factor itself must be cubed. Let me show you what that means. We're going to start with 278 cubic meters. Now we want to get into cubic inches, but I don't have a, a conversion factor to go from meters to inches, but don't I have one that goes from centimeters to inches? So let's hop out of meters cubed and get into centimeters cubed. Now, in one meter, there are 100 centimeters, but these units are cubed. So that means we cube the conversion factor. So in reality, in a box that's a cubic meter, so one meter by one meter by one meter, remember it's 100 centimeters long by 100 centimeters deep by 100 centimeters tall. So we have 100 times 100 times 100. That's why we cube the conversion factor. So whenever both units are cubed, we cube the conversion factor. So that would get us into cubic centimeters. Now we're going to hop out of cubic centimeters and get into our desired unit, cubic inches. Now remember, in one inch, there are 2.54 centimeters. But in a cubic inch, there must be 2.54 cubed cubic centimeters. So this will be our answer in um, cubic inches. So let's get our calculator out. I'll show you how to enter this. We have 278. Now we're going to multiply that by 100 cubed. So one up. Oh, so let's clear that out. 278 times 100. We're going to use our caret key. Caret key 3. So that's 100 to the third power divided by 2.54 caret key, because this is to the third power, 3. Enter. Now this is an ugly number. 1696460.86. Now we're only allowed, let's see, 3 here, infinite here, 3 sig figs here. I have to round off to that number right there. So, 169, and then the number next to it is a 6. I'm going to round this off to 170, aren't I? With a bunch of zeros after it. So we're going to go 170. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hopefully I counted right. Now that still only has two significant figures in it, so how do we write that with three significant figures? So we'd say 1.70 times 10 to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cubic inches. Let me just make sure I counted that right. I'll do it up here. One, two, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So we have 1.70 times 10 to the seventh cubic inches. So 17 million cubic inches are in a room that's 278 cubic meters. So this is just a reminder if both units are cubed, you need to cube your conversion factor. Okay. Now also, if both units are squared, you're going to square your conversion factor. Now I must tell you, those are unusual. You run into those once in a blue moon. So don't worry too much about this, but you might see it um, some, sometime during the year. So keep your eye out for it and just try to remember. All right, let's talk about density. The density of an object is its mass per unit volume. So whenever we say per, we're dividing. So it's mass divided by the volume. So in equation form, density can be expressed as density equals mass divided by volume, or D equals M over V. Now we in chemistry like to use grams for our mass unit, and usually milliliters for our volume unit. But remember, 
That's the same as grams per cubic centimeter, isn't it? Because milliliters and cubic centimeters are the same. This is our preferred unit in chemistry. Now, you physics kids might be used to grams per cubic meter or kilograms uh, per cubic centimeter or something strange like they do in physics land. But in chemistry, we like to keep it in grams per mil. Now, to measure the density of an object, you must be able to measure its mass and its volume. Mass can be measured quite easily on a balance. The volume of a solid can be determined in different ways. For instance, the volume of a cube is, its length, is the length of one edge cubed. The volume of a rectangular solid is the length times the height times the width. The volume of a liquid can be found in a clear container graduated to indicate units of volume, and this is called the graduated cylinder. We'll use both of these methods to measure volume in an upcoming lab. So, when you have uh, an equation, there are two possible ways to solve a given math problem. The preferred is dimensional analysis or method of equations, which is plug and chug. That means if I give you the mass, you divide by the volume and you can find your density. I like to use dimensional analysis. Either way is correct. However, we will use dimensional analysis in these examples to make sure you have the idea down. So, let's take a block of lead. It has a, a length of 4.37 centimeters, a height of 6.02 centimeters, and a depth of 13.68 centimeters. And the mass is 4.103 kilograms. And I want to find the density in grams per cubic centimeter. So density is mass divided by volume. So my mass is 4.103 kilograms. Now my desired unit is grams. So I'm going to hop out of kilograms and get into grams. So a kilogram is bigger and there are a thousand grams in a kilogram. So right now I have my mass on top just like I'd like. And I want to divide by the volume in cubic centimeters. So remember it's a rectangular solid so the volume is in that length times width times height. So I'm going to divide by 4.37 centimeters and also 6.02 centimeters and finally 13.68 centimeters. So I'll have centimeters, centimeters, and centimeters that I'm multiplying by on the bottom and that will give me cubic centimeters and of course I have grams on top. So all, is over. All, all that's left is plugging and chugging. So let's see what we get here. Let's clear this all out. 4.103 times 1,000 divided by 4.37 divided by 6.02 and then divided by 13.68. Enter. Now my calculator says 11.40085 and some numbers after that. I have three sig figs in each of my length measurements. This is infinite and I have four sig figs here so I can have three in my answer. So I count over three and I round this off to 11.4 grams per cubic centimeter. Now you can approach this differently. Couldn't I have taken this separately and taken my length times width times, times height and divided that by the product? And I still would have gotten the same answer. This is a bit prettier if you do it this way. Okay? Alright, let's try another one. Now uh, the density of mercury is 13.6 grams per cubic centimeter, so it's denser than lead. That means that if lead were placed in a pool of mercury, the lead would actually float. Remember, if, it's density, if the density of the solid is less than the liquid, the solid will float. Now, of course, if I put lead in water, it would sink. But if I place it in a pool of mercury, the lead would actually float. So, this is a fun little question. How many milliliters would I need for two pounds of mercury, if that's its density? So, I'm going to solve for volume here. So if density is mass divided by volume, you could do the method of equations and solve for volume. 
or we can use dimensional analysis and solve for volume. Remember, the unit we're after is milliliters. So I'm going to go from pounds to grams. One pound is, do you remember? 454 grams. So now I would have the mass of my mercury in grams. Now, I want to get into volume. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to circle this, is I am going to use my density as a conversion factor. Do you see how this says 13.6 grams per cubic centimeter? Can't I just use that as a conversion factor and put 13.6 by grams and 1 by milliliters or cubic centimeters because it's per cubic centimeter, not 3 or 4, but 1. So grams divide out and I have milliliters left over, which is my desired unit. So I'm going to take 2.00 times 454 divided by 13.6 and that says 66.7647 with a bunch of numbers after that. I have three, three, and three sig figs. So I'm going to count over three and round it off. That becomes 66.8 milliliters. Okay? Now this looks really easy when I do it. And when you see one of these on your homework, come back to this video and try it again or watch it again. It really is pretty easy. I just use density as a conversion factor. Okay, let's do another one. This is example 19 in your notes. If the density of water is one gram per cubic centimeter, what's the density in pounds per cubic foot? In other words, if I had a cubic foot of water, try to draw a cube here. Sometimes I'm good at this. So if that were a cubic foot full of water, what would its weight be? Could you lift it up? Let's see. I'm going to start with what I know. One gram per cubic centimeter. And I need to get grams into pounds and cubic centimeters into cubic feet. So let's see. Let's go from grams to pounds first. One pound is 454 grams. So now I have pounds per cubic centimeter. And I like pounds, but I don't like cubic centimeters right now. So I'm going to put that on top. See how it's on the bottom? Let me get into cubic inches first, because I don't know how many cubic centimeters are in a cubic foot. In one inch, there are 2.54 cubic centimeters, but the unit's cubed. So do you remember? We have to cube the conversion factor. And then we can go from cubic inches to cubic feet. In one foot, there are 12 inches, but the unit's cubed. So we'll cube the conversion factor, and we will have pounds on top and cubic feet on the bottom. Let's try it. 1 divided by 454 times 2.54 carat key 3 times 12 carat key 3. Enter. Now my calculator says 62.3719 with some numbers after it. I'm allowed, let's see, do you guys agree this is a definition? Three sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs. So I'm going to call that 62.4 pounds in a cubic foot of water. So, yeah, most of you could lift it. 62 pounds a cubic foot of water? I'll bet you could. Alright, let's do one more and then you'll be pretty good at density problems, I think, and dimensional analysis, and then we can finally move on uh, from this chapter. Um, if I have 1,250 pounds of oil, and the density is 0.9261 grams per cubic centimeter, what's the volume in gallons? Hmm. Well, I'm going to start with pounds here. 1,250 pounds, and I'm going to go from pounds to grams. One pound is 454. Oh, I crossed off the wrong unit. Okay, so one pound is 454 grams. Now, why did I get into grams? Do you know? Well, because I want to use my density as a conversion factor. I want to go from grams to cubic centimeters. 
See how that says 0.9261 grams per cubic centimeter? So 0.9261 grams per cubic centimeter. So you noticed I've used density as a conversion factor again, haven't I? And now we simply need to get into gallons. So we're going to go cubic centimeters to quarts, because I don't know how many cubic centimeters are in a gallon. Do you remember one quart? Let's look that up really quick. One quart is 946 cubic centimeters. That's from the previous video. And then finally, we can go quarts to gallons. And one gallon has four quarts in it. So, let's see what we get here. 1250 times 454 divided by 0.9261 divided by 946 divided by 4 enter my calculator says 161.941 I'm allowed let's see infinite 3 4 3 and 3 so I'm allowed 3 sig figs so I have to make a decision there let's call this 162 gallons so that much oil that, math, that, that weight of oil would be 162 gallons of oil. All right. Now, if you can do these, you can do any. Once again, you're going to want to review this section quite often throughout the year if you forget how to handle dimensional analysis and calculating in chemistry. So I hope this helped you. Thanks. Bye-bye.